Hi, my name is Nick Broughton and I'm a Random Fish. If you're a Random Fish too, hit that subscribe button and let's be Random Fishes together, shall we? Now, I myself, before I start this video, I just want to plug Netflix. Uh, why? Because most of what I review on this channel is now because of Netflix. Um, I either watch it on there or I hear about it through Netflix. They've done some amazing things over the years. They've given us the Marvel shows of Daredevil, The Defenders, Iron Fist, Luke Cage and Jessica Jones. Um, they brought out a bunch of amazing shows such as uh, Rick and Morty as well as this Enchantment and of course the big one Stranger Things. If you're any kind of a fan of that kind of style please do consider Netflix. They're an amazing streaming service with good products. So anyway the main thing that I want to talk about today wasn't Netflix but something that I found on Netflix incredibly funny released in 2012 called What About Dick? Um, this is essentially an audio play that was done live on stage. Um, it was incredibly good, and I thought it was a bit weird at first of seeing a filmed version of an audio play that was released on CD, or at least one that I heard through Spotify as well, which was really weird. Um, but I've watched it, and I find it really funny. Um, a bit of background. What About Dick was written by and, and done by Eric Idle. It's called Eric Idle's What About Dick. Uh, I left his name off very specifically so I could bring him up. Eric Idle is one of the members of, former members I should say, of Monty Python. Uh, one of the best ever comedy and satire troops to ever appear in British history and indeed in America as well because when they took him on America, they won. They won something chronic. It was brilliant. Um, unfortunately, the appearances of Monty Python as a group have deteriorated massively, obviously, since not only the group splitting up at the end of the run of Monty Python's Flying Circus, but also the death of Graham Chapman. Not the greatest thing in the world, but it was still nice to see them occasionally all get together, perform their old sketches, and possibly do some comedy stuff involving the memories of Graham Chapman. Um, the most recent one, of course, being in 2014, when uh, they did one called One Down, Five to Go, uh, in which the remaining members of Monty Python all got together on the stage and they did the sketches. Now, the reason I'm talking about Monty Python is that their humour is substantially relevant to how a lot of us grew up. We all grew up with Monty Python in some way, shape or form. For some of us, we actually grew up watching Flying Circus as it was aired, as it was in syndication. For the rest of us, for those of us like myself, I was born in 1990, I was not raised on Monty Python. I was raised on the people who were raised on Monty Python. The TV that I watched, the comedy that I watched growing up, especially when I reached my, my teenage years, that sort of area, is very heavily inspired by Monty Python. So, of course, I ended up watching a lot of Monty Python myself due to the people that I've watched and all that sort of thing. And of course, my love for comedy being what it is, I wanted to check it out. Now, Eric Idle is considered by many to be the musical talent of the group. Now, there are many members of Monty Python that might disagree with that statement, but it could be the truth. He was the one who wrote a lot of the good songs. For example, in Life of Brian, the song Always Look on the Bright Side of Life, the big catchy number at the end of the film. That was written by Eric Idle and sung by him on the film in the film. Uh, he put on his Mr. Cheeky voice, as I believe it's said. Um, Some things in life are bad. You know, that usual thing. Um, but it's a brilliant thing to watch. And he's a brilliant guy to sort of listen to, especially his lyrics. His lyrics are very, are very thought out. They're very unique. They fit the rhyming scheme a lot better than you'd think. Um, and it's incredibly fun to watch them sort of talk about it. And this is where What About Dick gets his brilliance from, because it's written by a guy who wrote very satirical and very funny lyrics to a lot of very good songs. Um, while I under and he was also responsible, one of the other things he was responsible for, is the musical Spamalot, the musical version of Holy Grail. Possibly one of the best ideas that he's ever had in his life. It's genius. But this is a complete separation from the Monty Python setup. This is a completely different animal, and yet it still, it does not reek of Monty Python desperation. It reeks of Eric Idle, which is a brilliant thing. Um, one of the problems that's had a lot with, with comedy troops is that when they disband, 
for whatever reason, when they disband, the unfortunate thing is sometimes certain people within the group aren't able to create their own style of comedy. They have to rely on the comedies of old, which is a nice thing, I guess, in certain ways, but it's not perfect. It's not something that we all want to see. Um, and through that, through that evidence, sort of very well done, I do thoroughly believe in the awesomeness of Eric Idle and the awesomeness of Monty Python, but I love that they're able to separate themselves from each other, which is a good thing. But anyway, on to What About Dick. Uh, it's a play that uh, talks about, it's an observational look at the fall of the British Empire through the eyes of a piano. Yes, I did say that right. You weren't mishearing me. It's told through the eyes of a piano. A piano that narrates the story and is voiced by Eric Idle. That's just genius. He's there on the stage with the others. He's singing along with them. He's doing all the lines. He's playing other parts. But his primary focus is to play the narrator of the show. Now, Eric Idle is the first and big reason why I recommend this play in droves. I recommend you listen to it on Net on Spotify. I agree, um, do decline that you watch it either on DVD or on Netflix if you have it. If you don't, you might want to get it. If you can't find the DVD, I don't know. We'll have to see. But from my own perspective, at the very least, I love this show for very specific reasons. And the first biggest one is that it's Eric Idle. Eric Idle wrote and directed this and is in it. It's brilliant. The second thing which I think is a kind of big deal, especially when it comes to me at least. It made Billy Connolly almost corpse. That is not something that you can do very easily. Billy Connolly, if you don't know him, is a gigantic, is a, a massive Scottish stand-up comedian who was, who was the guy who went on stage and did a spot about incontinence pants and actually got most of the audience in such hysterics that maybe some of them became incontinent during that stand-up. He did an entire section on it. He did comedy with the banjo. He's known for being one of the most foul-mouthed comedians that's ever existed. He's brilliant. In the words of Eddie Izzard, in one of Billy Connolly's own documentaries, is he was doing alternative comedy before other people were doing alternative comedy. It's his thing. It's his legacy. And it's brilliant. And Eric Idle... The guy from Monty Python made Billy Connolly, one of the most foul-mouthed comedians to ever exist, nearly corpse on stage. I don't know why that's a big thing to me, it just is. Um, bear in mind, this whole thing is completely subjective. You might enjoy it for other reasons, I don't know. But for me at least, that's one of the big reasons. Billy Connolly is, is in my mind, one of the hardest comedians to break. And yet Eric Idle broke him so well. And so thoughtful, and it was just so brilliantly done. Um, I loved it. Um, thirdly, my third big reason for liking this is the overall cast. I spoke about Eric Idle, I spoke about Billy Connolly. Um, there are other people in this that are just genius. For example, you have Eddie Izzard in this. Genius. Tim Curry is in this. Okay. Do you remember Tim Curry in Home Alone 2? If you don't, he can be summed up in this one very simple phrase. <clears throat> Have a lovely day. That is Tim Curry in Home Alone 2. Take that character, make him older. You kind of have it in What About Dick? He plays a very openly gay character on, st on, this st on this stage, in this play, and it's brilliantly done, and the way he phrases it is so well done. The play is set in 1610. The actual event is set in 1610. So, of course, during that time period, no one really spoke about the whole concept of being gay or spoke about the, the, the concept of, of emotion or, or all that sort of thing. One of the big jokes of the whole thing is the satire of Britishness. The fact that, you know, we don't talk about emotions. We're not allowed to have emotions. We're British. Yes, what, what? I'm smoking a pipe, you know. But somehow, this made it so funny and so brilliantly satirized that you kind of understand why they didn't do that very much. Because 
it almost felt like if you did talk about your emotions, if you were British, or at least if you were in British society, that it didn't seem like you would be you were going to take life seriously, or you would be taken seriously as a person. It just didn't feel like it during that time. And I think that's an incredibly unique and very bizarre idea to sort of go for it. I think that's incredibly fun. I think it's incredibly brave. Um, the cast overall, just... Jane Leaves is in this. A whole bunch of amazing characters. Jane, Jane Leaves being in this is sort of a nice little plot point to me because obviously Jane Leaves... The character that she plays has a very unique line in this. Um, there's a line that Eddie Izzard, one of the characters in that, is playing a character who's trying to woo Jane Leaves' character and he says he would like to be a butler. And Jane Leaves says, I all, that's weird, I also dream of serving. And she goes on to explain that she enjoys serving alongside a man with a strong vision. Someone who knows how to keep order. But the second she says, I also dream of serving, to anyone who's ever watched Frasier in their entire life, automatically has a flashback to when she played Daphne in the show. I mean, good lord! There's so many callbacks, there's so many brilliant things. There's a moment where, in one of the in one of the performances, where they literally say a line of something like, he foresaw Sarah Palin. Who's that? I don't know, some sort of British comedian. Yes! Um, he also foresaw the Kardashians. Is that a disease? Yes, yes it is. Oh my God, yes! This, the more I talk about this film, the more openly excited I get about sharing it, the more openly happy I feel about it, because it takes Britishness to such an entirely new level, and it takes ridiculous ideas and and sort of says, no, these were legitimate. These were legitimately thought were good ideas back then. Holy crap, how did you not think about this? Oh my god, um, you know, Russell Brand is in this. Russell Brand is in this thing. And he's legitimately... Okay, Russell Brand is a very Marmite type comedian. When I say Marmite, I mean you either love him or you hate him. It's one or the other. I don't find there's many people who think he's just okay. It's a very rare thing for that. Um, I liked him in a few things, but I wasn't... I didn't like him in other things. He was very much... I liked him and didn't like him at the same time. And it was very hard. I had to, dis I had to disassociate his comedy from his personal life. His personal life, if you will, very much influences his comedy, but his comedy is very different to how he... Because, of course, this is also the guy that created the YouTube channel, The Trues. Um, if you don't know it, look it up on YouTube after you've watched this video. You know what? Find out for yourself. It's fine. Um, but, good God, he's legitimately funny. And, you know, all this stuff. And it's brilliantly done. But anyway, I've rambled on enough about this thing. I suggest that you leave this video. You go. You find it. You watch it online wherever you can it may be on other platforms i don't know i haven't looked that up but what i do know is that it is on netflix so please please check it out on other channels it's funny it's brilliant it's hilarious what eric idols what about dick check it out random fish out